welcome to episode 7 of My Doll's House Diary. Now since the last episode I've actually managed to get quite a bit done, so let me show you what I've been up to. So it's the morning after I attached the lining paper and I'm really pleased to see that some of those wrinkles I was worried about have actually shrunk back further still overnight. So that's good, it doesn't look too bad at all. So I've got a nice smooth base there now um, to apply the paint and I'll be using an emulsion paint and it's called Mushroom and I'll be using that on the walls and the ceiling. I really like how that light's coming through that back window there onto the ceiling. Doesn't that look nice? So I'll do two coats um, of the emulsion and leave that to dry. So I've just started out by covering the floor tiles with some paper and I've just stuck that um, down around the edges with some masking tape just to protect the flooring and I'm going to make a start on the ceiling. So that um, sort of big bubble that you can see in the middle there, when you've got copper tape in place it's advisable not to put glue or anything over the top of it so I purposely didn't apply any glue over the line of copper tape and that's the bubbling you can see there but I will be putting a beam along there which will completely cover that. A few bubbles um, in other places but I'm hoping again that once the paper dries that will shrink back. Okay, on to the back wall. Okay, so that's the first coat of paint applied. And I actually applied that quite thickly using a one inch brush. I'll leave that to dry completely overnight and then the second coat I'll apply using a finer brush. With the one inch brush you can actually see the brush marks in there. When that dries they do usually fade a bit but I will apply a second coat and I will use the finer brush just to get a really nice finish. Okay now I want to have a look at that chimney breast. Okay, so I've got the chimney breast here and I just want to shave some off of the top. Now the kitchen, the height of the kitchen, um, in fact of all of the rooms in the doll's house, is 225 millimetres, so just under 9 inches. And this is 226 and a half. So I want to take off, I actually want to take it lower than the 225 millimetres um, so that it sort of slots in easily and then the beams will cover any sort of gap at the top. So I've got my sanding mask here, let's pop that on and my glasses okay. and I'm just going to do it on my um, worktop here. Right, I think that should be enough, so let's go and try that inside the kitchen. Okay, so just before I try the chimney breast in there, I just wanted to show you that I've done the second coat um, of emulsion in there, and that looks really nice now, it's got a really nice um, finish. So I'm going to remove the paper from the floor. And then, yeah, that now goes in nice and easily, and that will sit there. So I've got some gap in at the top now, but the beams um, that I'm going to put on the ceiling will cover that. And before I actually fit that in there, paper it and fit it, I just want to paint. Um, this window frame here on this left-hand wall 
just because it's easier to get to before I've attached the chimney. And I'm going to use a, a paler cream for that, called Country Cream, which I'll also be using for the furniture, the other window and the um, false door in the back there. And I just had an idea, actually, I was browsing some um, photographs on Instagram and I saw a kitchen with a lovely glazed door, the top part of it was glazed. So though I'm not going to be making that yet, I just thought I'd let you know my, my latest idea. And I think that will look really nice. Okay, so let me go and get the paint for the window. Okay, so that's the um, window painted. And now the paint's actually on, it looks paler um, than it does in the pot. So I think what I might actually do is mix this um, country cream with the mushroom that I used for the walls, maybe in equal parts. Um, and that will give me just a slightly darker shade of cream than this, but lighter than the walls, which is what I wanted. So for the second coat, uh, we'll give that a go and see how that looks. But it's not, it doesn't look much different from the white that was on there before at the moment. I didn't want it to look so bright. Okay, let's go and mix some paint. Okay, so I've got this little um, paint pot here which I've cleaned out and I just snipped the little brush off that comes in there just so it didn't get in the way. And then I keep these spoons in my toolbox and I use these for mixing paint. So I'm just going to start by taking one spoonful of the um, mushroom, so that's the sort of darker cream. Just pop that in there. Just let that sort of drain off the spoon. And then just give it a quick shake. And one spoonful of the classic cream. I thought it was called country cream, but it's classic cream. And in there too. Put that out of the way. And I've just got this old paintbrush here that I use for stirring. Pop that there. That's already looking like quite a nice colour actually. Give that a quick mix. Okay, so I've just got a piece of scrap wood here. I just want to do just a little square of the mushroom first, just for comparison. Like that. I'll just get a clean brush. Let's try a little bit of the new mixture. Okay, so still a lot lighter. And I also want to just try the original one as well. Yes, that one in the middle is actually quite nice. I was thinking it still looked quite pale, so I was going to darken it up against the original colour. It's actually a really lovely shade. So that's the colour I'll use. So one part mushroom, one part classic cream. And when you're mixing paint, always sort of make a note. One, one part of each is quite easy to remember, but if you're sort of doing two to one or three to two or something, then always just make a note of what you've done so that if you do need to mix more, you'll be able to colour match it. Okay, so I can now go and redo that window frame. There, so that's the slightly darker cream there. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I, I prefer that colour. That's not quite as stark a contrast against the mushroom of the walls. Okay, so now I can get back to paper in the chimney breast. Okay, so I just had to make a few amendments to the chimney breast. First of all, I added an extra um, bit of wood to the bottom of each leg. They were actually unlevel, so I've got a couple of bits of 1.5 on there, and one bit of 1.5 there. And then I've just added some 0.8mm sheet in here so that when I wrap my paper round I've got a nice smooth surface to attach it to. And I've done that on both sides. So the paper I'm using is an embossed brick paper. And it's got this lovely sort of random brick 
um, effect. In fact, if I turn it over, you might be able to see the embossing a bit better. You can see there that it's actually raised. The bricks are raised. And it's got these tabs at the end, so if you're doing a larger area, you can join them in together um, and not notice the seam, so that's really good. And I can actually supply this paper through my Etsy shop um, if it's something you're looking for, so just let me know if you'd like some. So this is going to be the, the front of the chimney breast, because um, it's just the neater side. Here I've got some sort of gouges out of it. So turn the paper over and put the chimney breast face down and I'm just thinking so if that's face down this will be the wall or the flap that I want to leave for the wall so always just have a think about it before you start cutting into your paper yes so that will be the that will be the wall beside the fireplace will be over there okay so and place it down like that and first of all I want to get the height of the paper right so I'll just use my pencil and just go along there and as this has got lovely lines on it I can just cut along the line I'm using these magic scissors um, which I also sell and I've been using them for so many different things lately and they're still as sharp as they were when I got them they really are good they cut into anything. Just get rid of that piece. And then pop that back down on there. And I just want enough on this side to wrap around and around the back. So I'm going to crease that along that side and then actually crease that in. Like that so I get a nice sharp line along that edge and then I want to crease it around the back as well so pull it tight as you sort of crease hold it around there and then I'm going to crease that in as well going to trim off those little tabs. Get rid of that piece. Okay, so I've measured the wall in the kitchen and it's 115 millimetres. Actually it's a little bit less than that. I've added on a couple of millimetres just to be on the safe side. What I want to do first of all is crease this around the side. Fold that along again. Making sure it's still sitting right into the sort of crease that you've done at the other side. Just pop that out again, make that a nice sharp crease. I'll wrap it around like that so I can fold that crease in again. And this is the bit that will be showing in the kitchen. Crease that in like that. Again, fold it in. And this is lovely thick paper as well. Really like the feel of it. will actually lay flat like that. So my measurement from here to there was 115 millimetres like that and the same at the top there. And then I'll actually just draw and then cut 
put that away as well. And again, discard that piece. In fact, let me see if that piece will be big enough to go inside. Yes, it is just big enough. So I did order an extra sheet um, just in case I didn't have enough to go inside, but that actually works out perfectly. Um, and that piece will be stuck to the wall in the kitchen, but we'll do that in a moment. So pop that over there. And then now what I need to do is cut down the middle of the opening. And then those pieces will fold back around the inside of those two legs. So what I'll do is I'll turn that over and work from the back. I want to make sure that the paper is at the bottom of the legs. And I'm just going to do a line across there. And I'm I'm sort of marking it just below this piece because this piece won't be seen. I'm going to be building a false chimney breast um mantelpiece, sorry, on the front, and that will be lower than this. So I'll go down to about there and then I want to make a cut halfway up there. So that's about 101, so it's about 50 and a half. I'm just going to draw up the sides of the legs so I know where to do my central measurement. I want to cut a T shape, so I'll go up the centre like that, and then along that line, up there, and the same along there. Pop that back in, and then that will fold round like that. And again, I want to crease that in there. A nice sharp line. And then crease that around the back of the leg as well. Again, pulling it nice and tight. And the same on this other side and like that and then I'll remove that again and crease those in okay I'm now ready to stick this to the chimney breast and then I'll apply um, glue to the actual wall of the doll's house and we'll, and we'll stick this flap down and again, I'm just going to use my Gorilla Glue. And I'm just flattening this out so I can apply the glue. I want to get a glue spreader as well. chimney breast back on before that dries off too much. There like that I'm making sure I'm level at the bottom there and then I can fold all these pieces around. And where you've sort of creased in along the joins it does make it easier then to apply.
too. Just make sure it's all nice and flat everywhere. A little bit of glue on there. Okay, so I'll now go and mark up where I want to stick the extra piece um, of paper actually onto the kitchen wall and then we can put this into place. Okay, so I've placed the um, chimney breast into place there in the kitchen and then I'm just going to lightly draw around on the inside like that. And then carefully take this out. And then I need to glue my extra piece in between those lines like that. Okay, so I applied glue on the back of there. Just want to make sure I'm well within those lines. Make sure it's straight as well with the floor so that the bricks on the inside will line up. into place. Crease it in along that corner. And then I've got a little bit overhanging here, but once the paper's dry I can trim that off. Just hold that into place for a moment while the glue begins to take. Okay, so I'm making a start now on the window frame. I'm going to keep it extremely simple, it's just going to be a fixed frame and I'm making it in two parts as you can see here. So I began by measuring the window opening and because it isn't square I took the measurement from the shortest um, area from top to bottom and side to side and then I'll make a nice square frame and any gaps around the edge I can then fill and paint over. So I'm going to be using 3x3 three three strip, the um, wood at the back of the doll's house is 6mm thick, so a quarter of an inch thick, so I'll push the window towards the back outside of the doll's house, so I'll have a sort of 3mm, one eighth of an inch overhang in front of the window, which will be the um, sort of rest in place really for the um, window ledge and then I'll just make a simple window ledge that will probably be about nine millimetres deep. So I'll have a bit of an overhang coming out into the kitchen, which you actually wouldn't see um, on a real window. That would obviously fit inside the window recess. But in this case, I want to have quite a deep window ledge so I can sit some plant pots and things on there. So I've cut the pieces that I'm going to need. And then for placement um, of the, the panes or the divides, I've just divided this central divide into three and that, that was divisible by three, so that was a nice equal um, panes along there. But if you've got an amount that isn't divisible by three or however many um, you want to divide it into, always add the extra little measurement, and it's probably going to be about half a millimetre, into the centre there and then that's less noticeable once the piece is put together. And then I've done a little mark on the top and bottom so that I know where that central divide will sit. Now I'm going to be placing them by eye, but if you wanted to, you could put a little pencil mark in the center of the sort of rungs as well, if you're not very good at placing by eye. 
So I'll construct this central bit first and then I'll glue these outer um, sort of frames into place. So I've got some glue here on a piece of card as usual. I'm going to apply it with a cocktail stick and I'll just begin by it's going a little bit tacky. I'll just begin by putting a little dot on each of those. And then I'm going to use the lines on my cutting mat to line those pieces up. Press that into place. And I'm doing the windows like this to match with the um, window that's already in place on that side wall. It's a sort of Georgian style window so they have these smaller um, panes. An original Georgian windows would have actually been sash windows. So that piece can be left to dry and never pick them up, always just sort of move them along your worktop to make sure they're not sticking. Do the same with the other side. Now I can attach the top and bottom. I'm just going to push that along and leave that to completely dry off now. Same with this one. So when you come to attach the final um, sides, always just line them up first and make sure that everything's touching. Sometimes you might find that these are a little bit longer and that's either because you've cut them just a tiny fraction too long or sometimes when you apply the glue it sort of pushes them this way a bit. They don't sort of sit tight up against the um, divide so you might find that this, this will be a bit wonky so just level them off if you need to and just do that with your craft knife just sort of shave in a tiny bit off the end until you've got a nice fit and just take a tiny bit off at a time and then double check and then take a bit more off if you need to but it should only ever be a, a, a tiny amount okay so I can now apply glue to each divide little dot on each one like that and then pop that back down You want to make sure you've got a nice flush top and bottom. Press that together and then bring the remain inside in. Push it all together so that it's completely square. Use your lines again on your cutting mat to make sure that the pane divides are staying in line. And you've got a little um, bit of time to sort of jiggle things about if you need to. When you're making something to actually fill cut out area such as a window or a door, it needs to be exact. Press it all together as the glue begins to take. Make sure it's all sitting flat and that piece can then be left to dry. And again I'm just going to push that along the work surface rather than trying to pick it up. And do the remaining piece. And again, I'll just pop that along there and that can be left to dry. Okay, so I let the glue dry off completely and then I've sanded these on both sides and I've now got a nice flush square pair of frames. So I'm now going to go and try these into the window opening in the kitchen. Okay, so that's just sort of balanced in there at the moment so I don't want to touch it in case it falls through the back but actually that's not too bad a fit. It does sort of show up um, how bad my cutting was 
especially above the window there. Let me see if I can move in a bit closer. I'm just using the small camera here, just so I could sort of get in quite close. I don't know if you remember, but when I did the um, cutting video, I said that the blade had just sort of shot off into the top and that's where it cut. So that's going to need to be filled and along there as well isn't quite straight and a bit underneath, but actually not too bad. So I can fill that um, and then paint over it. And I also think I could probably get away with a deeper window ledge. So that was actually um, 12 millimetres in the end, but I think I could bring that out to about 15. And then I've got a little bit more room on there. Yeah, so I'll take that out again now and then I can actually paint it. And I'll paint the three parts individually, so the, the two frames and the window ledge. And then we can actually uh, secure that into place and then I'll attach the acetate at the back of the house. Okay, so I cut a slightly deeper window ledge. This is 16 millimetres and I just rounded off um, the corners along the front edge there. And I rounded off from sort of top to bottom as well, just to get rid of the sharp edges. And I also put this in place just to check that I still had enough clearance for the mixer tap, which will be on the sink unit below. And that was fine. So my next job is to paint these using the... Um, cream and mushroom paint that I mixed earlier and to make it easier to paint the frames I'm going to attach them to a piece of card so I've just stuck some um, masking tape on here sticky side up and then just attach the corner so it's just sort of lightly holding it um, for you like that and then once the paint is dry I can turn them over and do the other side. Okay, so the paint on my window frames has dried and I've gently sanded them both and the window ledge and now I've cut some acetate just slightly smaller than the outer frame of the window and I'm now going to attach it and I'm using this deluxe materials glue and glaze which is designed for attaching acetate um, and it doesn't fog the plastic so it's really good for this sort of thing now my little it's got a little um, applicator tip but my nozzle thing has broken off so I have to tip it out. I'll just put a little bit on there and then make sure I'm attaching it to the back of the frame and I just want to attach a little bit, apply a little bit sorry around the edges and again you only need a little tiny bit of this Let's put a tiny bit on the, each of those short divides. And just wipe any dust off of the acetate. And then lay that in place. And just very gently press it down. And that can then be left to dry and then any glue that does sort of seep over onto the acetate you can remove with a cocktail stick once it's dry. I find it comes off easier if you allow it to dry first. Do this piece as well. Okay, so I'm starting to 
attach um, the window frame. And we've got the window ledge in place there and the left hand window and I'm just using my hand at the back to make sure that it's staying flush as well with the back of the house and the final side and I'm really pleased with how that looks I just want to move in a little bit closer so move the light around a bit make it easier yeah so I've still got the gaps um, to fill in around the outside now I purposely didn't apply any glue down the center because I want that to look sort of like the opening so I'm going to let those dry and then I'll put the polyfiller in around the gaps at the sides and the top but I'm actually going to make a little strip to go um, underneath to hide that gap underneath the window ledge So I've just finished the chimney breasts around and I'm going to attach this now and the tutorial for this um, I've done separately and I've created a playlist called My Doll's House Tutorials and you'll find it in the kitchen section and everything I make for the kitchen I'll save in there just so it's easier to find them all. Okay so to attach this into place I'm going to apply glue to the surround. place and you'll find the tutorial for the door over in the playlist um, with the chimney breast as well that's all that's in there so far but I'll, I'll add everything that I make um, to put in the kitchen into that same playlist so they're all in the one place and easy to find I really love how that door came out and it looks like it's been there forever doesn't it I think those little keys are a really nice little um, detail I will be adding um, a coat hook to the top of the door and we'll put lots of nice things on there, bags and scarves and whatever else we can fit on there. Okay, so in the next episode I'm going to be fitting the beams um, to the ceiling and putting some skirting board around the outside as well. And then I'm going to be spray painting the Arga. Now since I've moved it, the doors won't stay shut, but I'll be rehanging re them anyway once I've sprayed it. And also the flue is now a little bit too long. Now I've sort of sanded some off of the chimney breast so I can resize that and use that again. So that's good. And that will sit in there. I think that's going to look really nice in the black and I think it's all coming together really nicely now. I've made a plan now of the units and the furniture I want to include in the kitchen so in a couple of episodes time we'll be starting the tutorials for those pieces and I'm really looking forward to doing that and the first one will be a double kitchen sink unit um, to go underneath the window. I hope you've enjoyed this episode if so please do give the video a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so as there's lots more to come. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.